We do have Crime 2 team coverage tonight on all aspects of these fires. Amanda Rowley and Kyle Simchuk are in Medical Lake tonight, following up with victims of the Gray Fire. Shannon Mowdy connected with people in Elk who have now lost everything. Mark Hanrahan live all night tonight, raising money for the local Red Cross. We'll hear from all of them, but first we want to get straight to Kyle Simchuk. He spoke with one man who barely managed to escape the fire. Kyle? Well, when a Pat Carpenter bought his pontoon boat just a few weeks ago and it may have saved his life, he managed to get three neighbors and a dog to safety. When the authorities call level three um, and say it's time to go, it, it's, it's time to go. Pat Carpenter was running out of time and options last Friday. He was 10 minutes behind his wife. She left their Silver Lake home in one of their cars right before the gray fire blocked roads, trapping him and several other neighbors. Donna was coming out uh, in her bathrobe and her slippers because the police had knocked on her door. The fire was coming right for them. We, and we knew our you know, houses were going uh, quickly. Carpenter loaded up three neighbors and a dog into his pontoon boat, which he bought just a few weeks ago. I had to remember where to, where to turn the battery on. Sadly, this is our house as there's fire in the front yards. Last video, fires in Vaselli's backyard. As I looked straight across uh, and, and saw the, uh, the, the flames, uh, I, 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 it, it dawned on me that in an instant, uh, our, our strip of uh, five, six houses uh, that we have down on the water uh, were just up like that. This is what's left of their property. The west side of, of uh, Silver Lake is, is predominantly leveled, but there's, there's spots of houses that somehow make it where the others don't, but uh, the majority uh, are, are down to the foundations. And you could always uh, wish you could bring more. So uh, I have a new Costco wardrobe as of, of yesterday. Thankfully, Carpenter and his wife have a place to stay with their daughter on the South Hill. Lots of hugs from grandkids. Yeah, they just they they have this sense when things are, are tough and and uh, um, man, we're getting cuddling time. <laughs> it's a, it's top notch. I'm telling you, it's uh, it's pretty darn cool. He's thankful for the first responders and his community. We're all gonna just keep holding each other up and as as we do. We're just uh, you know the, you see the best in people through things like this. Today he's planning to go look at the damage along with his neighbors. It's going to be tough. Yeah, it will. It will. Uh, and that's why we're going to do it together. We're, we're on that other end of watching people who are sitting in this chair. And, and uh, so you understand, I've always thought, uh, you know, just I'd be so happy for people being alive. The rest of it isn't going to matter. It matters, but, uh, you know, we're going to we're going to redo it. There's uh, uh, it, this is a speed bump in, in the road of life. And, and people certainly have uh, worse, worse speed bumps than this. And the carpenters tell me they do plan to rebuild. They're just taking things one day at a time. Reporting live in Cheney, Kyle Simchuk, Crim2 News.